careers unfortunately in debt, whether from college loans or the result of poor judgment in their use of credit cards. When we return, Larry Chang of United College Marketing talks about educating students on the proper use of credit to establish good credit from the beginning, and for many, that beginning is in college. Larry Chang of United College Marketing joins us now from our Chicago Bureau. Hi, Larry. Hello. How are you doing, Valerie? Well, I'm doing fine, and I'm of particular concern and interest in this category with a couple of college students of my own. Great. This college market is very lucrative. Is it not for the long term? It's super lucrative to the issuers who are trying to grow their account base and try to build their clientele. With that in mind, your concern is to make sure that students who are getting an education in college also get an education in what credit card risks they are facing and how they should manage it. Definitely, definitely. Our company tries to not only promote credit cards to college students, but also to promote credit education in the process. You have about uh, 10,000 talks that you are presented to a pretty captive audience. Tell us how your company works. Basically what we do is we go on to each and every particular four-year university that we're trying to target. And we hold seminars to groups that are already currently assembling. Groups such as fraternities, sororities, uh, other resume-related activities such as the American Marketing Association. And what it is that we do is we give a 20 to 25-minute credit seminar on the important topics of educating college students into the different pitfalls that they might fall into and also what it really means to have good credit. Let's talk pitfalls first. What are okay. some of the most common ones that college students uh, tend to fall into? What's really neat about the different pitfalls that we have seen is that they definitely fall into some very tight, neat categories. And one of the most popular ones is not actually getting your credit card bill, either because they're not receiving it in a dormitory or if they're living in a fraternity house with maybe 80 or 90 of their closest friends, sometimes they don't get all of their mail. Also, what happens is college students are very uh, liquid, or that they move quite a bit, so oftentimes they don't change their address. So when their credit card bills don't follow them, therefore they're not able to then pay them obviously on time. I also notice, and from the experience of being the mother of two, and they have done this, sometimes they think that credit information that comes to them is just junk mail, and they'll be right. tossing it, and I will try and retrieve it to make sure they know that what looks like junk mail may not be. Right, that's a really good point, because with college students, because issuers are so interested in targeting them, they're getting between 20 to 25 solicitations per semester. And what sometimes happens is their college roommate or a uh, person that they're living with accidentally throws away one of their cr actual real credit card bills because it does have the Visa MasterCard logo on there. So that is a very good point and that does happen once in a while. Larry, are you finding that insurers are demanding more of this college market with regard to credit cards more than just a completed application? Actually, it really depends on the, the college campus that they attend. At the four-year schools that we are at, oftentimes all you need is a school ID and a, a current uh, photo of the, the school ID just to make sure that they're enrolled currently. But outside of that, there's really no other guarantees that are required. There's no cosigner that's required, and there's really no either proof of income. Let's talk about the conversations that your company has with college students. Do you tell them okay. basic things like how to get a credit report, how important it is? Talk to us about the curriculum of what you do. Okay. What we saw before we started credit seminars on campus is that a lot of people would scream get good credit but nobody would really explain what it means to have good credit and what we do is we try to systematically analyze for them and show them the ropes of what it means to have good credit and of course it starts with the credit report that is a critical tool that loan officers use so we show them not only how to get a credit report for themselves but also how to read their credit report and how information is compiled very closely we make the analogy at our credit seminars to a college transcript with grades that might get transferred if you're going to be going to a different university or going to grad school. Your credit report is the same thing in that it follows you through the course of your life. You're speaking their language. They get that analogy of with uh, the uh, grades and their transcript. And if a credit card falls into that category, they know that's serious business. Right. Do you also talk a bit about or recommend how a college student should choose a credit card? Because even though they get swamped with them, they need to understand that they can pick and should pick and choose. Right. College students are in a very unique position in that they're able to have a lot of solicitations. And we coach them to just go right right past all the fluff, past all the advertising hoopla, and go right to the disclosure box. 
And that's one of the reasons also why we represent some of the lowest cost products on campus is that we can say, look, this is the way to shop for a credit card and it's in the disclosure box. And not only college students can use obviously this technique, but also traditional adults because we all do get quite a bit of direct mail from credit cards. The last minute or so that we have, I understand that about 65% of all college students have at least one credit card. With that in mind, uh, can you give quick strategies before we go as to what they should do, in whose name should the card be, things of that nature? What you want to make sure that you do if you're a college student is you want to establish credit in your own name. A lot of times a pitfall that college students fall into is that they have a credit card that's in their parents' name, and that's not really building good credit for themselves. Another good point is that some college students have a credit card but don't use it on a regular basis. And even if you just charge $15 to $20 and pay that amount off on time, the credit report makes no distinctions between a $20 payment or a $2,000 payment, so long as a payment has been made on time. Oh. And that's critical for when you're borrowing money in the future pay on time and hopefully pay in full. Right, to okay. avoid a lot of those interest costs. Thank you very much, Larry Chang, President, United College Marketing. We appreciate you spending time with us. Thank you, Valerie.